Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to show you three different ways that you can load images in JavaScript. I mean, really, it's like two different ways, one with XML HTTP request, and two that just set the source attribute of an image tag or an image object, but I do it in three different ways, so let's just hit those three different ways. So the first way I'm gonna explain is to load this flower here. And to load the flower, I've just gone into my HTML and I've set an image tag source equal to flower.png, which is obviously the image for the flower. And I set style equal to display none. This way this image doesn't show up in our rendered page. So it's kind of like a hidden image storing the flower's image data. And to access it in JavaScript, all I do is I come in here and I have load zero with it which handles my method for loading this image and I just get it from the document. I say document.query selector image and it finds that image tag and it stores the image itself inside of my images array and then I call render and all render does is loop through the images in images the images array and it draws all those images to the screen. So really simply I just get the image from HTML. You can do this the same way with any other element. So there's nothing new here. It's not even really loading it. Uh, one thing I will mention about this is I do not recommend it because when you set the source of your image tag, what's happening is the parser is saying, okay, I need to load this image. So it will then asynchronously start to load this image. Now, if it reaches your script tag before the image is fully loaded and your script is trying to do something with this image before it's fully loaded, it's not going to be able to do that and you're going to get an error. So unless you handle that, you're going to have an error. Um, so method two that loads this jelly image is going to do that a little more nicely and handle that for us all inside of JavaScript. So if I come over here to the load one function, that handles the code that loads the jelly image. So this basically does the same thing as the first method, except instead of defining my image inside of the HTML, I'm going to do it inside of JavaScript. So first thing I do is define a new empty image with new image. And I set the image's source equal to jelly.png. Now, if I change this to flower.png, it's going to replace this guy with a flower here. Now I got two flowers, but I don't want two flowers. I want a jelly and I want a flower. I'm just showing you so you guys know which one I'm talking about here. And that's it. Basically, be define an image and set the image's source. The same thing we did with HTML just in JavaScript now. The only difference is before I actually render this image, I have to wait until the load event fires and I have to handle that load event with function the function that I define here, the event handler function. And all I'm really doing is the same thing I did before. I just store the image, which is this, because it's referring to this image here, and I store it inside of my images array at position one, and then I call render. And once again, all that does is loop through the images array and draw all of my images. So you can kind of see more clearly the importance of handling your load event before you actually try to manipulate the image here. So what I'm going to do to give an example of why that's important is I'm going to alert image.width here. Say I want to do something with this image right after I set its source. I'm going to alert image.width here, and I'm also going to alert image.width after it loads. And you probably already see where this is going. I'm going to get two different values here. So the first one that fires is this one here. And it happens right after I set the image's source to jelly.png. I don't have access to the actual image yet because it hasn't fully loaded. So it thinks that my image is just this empty image because nothing is loaded into it yet and it has a width of zero. So I can't actually do anything with it until it finally loads. So after it loads, I have access to the full image that I'm loading. And that's why I have a 16 because my image's width is 16 and its height is 16. So I have to wait to manipulate my image until after it's loaded. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. The main one I want to show you guys is this final method, which uses XML HTTP request to load our image, our final human image here. 
So the first thing we have to do to get this to work is define an XML HTTP request. So I do that right here, and then I define my empty image that we're gonna store loaded image data into. And I'm gonna skip over this event listener and event handler. And I'm gonna to go to the bottom here. And after we define our empty image and we define our XML HTTP request, we say request.open. We use the get method because we're getting it from the server. Uh, we say human.png because that's going to represent this graphic here. And then we set the response type equal to array buffer. And the reason that we're using an array buffer is because we're actually loading the data inside of the image file itself, which is just bytes. It's just bits. That's all it is. So we're going to get that byte array, the array buffer, from our response. And then we finally we send the, re the request. So when this loads, I added a load handler up here. And whenever that request returns from the server with some information, it's going to call this function here. So inside of this function, we do a couple things. And I'm going to uncomment these alerts so I can show you what's going on at each step of this process. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to refresh the screen. So the first thing that happens is we get the byte array from our image file. So when our image file loads, we have, this is literally the content inside of the file in array buffer form. Because remember, we set, we set response type equal to array buffer. So as soon as that loads, we get an array of bytes, we convert it to a UN8 array, and we hand it that array buffer in this dot response. And then we alert bytes. So this is what the bytes actually look like in a UN8 array format. And a cool thing to note about this is that the width and the height of the file are actually right here in this top block. So this 00016, that's actually the width of our file. And this 00016 is actually the height of our file. And there's a bunch of other header information inside the file itself. Like there's a comment in there from GIMP and you'll see that later. But I just thought it was cool that the width and the height are just clearly visible inside of this UN8 array. So now I'm going to skip to the next thing. And what we have to do next is convert this UN8 array that we've generated from our array buffer into a string of character codes or of character objects, text character objects. We're converting it from character codes, which are these right here. So that looks like this. So now this has just executed. We say string dot from char code dot apply null, and we apply that to our bytes array here, which is what we just saw before this. And then we alert that string, and it gives us this prompt right here. So now we can see things in re human readable code. The parts that are human readable, we can read anyway. So up here, we see that it's a PNG image. And we can see time, or T-I-M-E, maybe that's not time. But we definitely can see comment created with GIMP. So we've actually converted those uh, byte codes into human-readable text characters. It's just that most of it isn't making any sense, not making readable words. But you can see we have some header information here, and then we have some actual image data down here. So before we use this information to create an image, we have to convert it to a base64 string. So that's what this next part right here does using the B to A method. Now the B to A method isn't necessarily standard, so it's not available in all browsers, but if you're using a current browser, you should have access to it. And you can go online and find a bunch of different methods that duplicate this, and you can program it into the JavaScript yourself if you don't have window.btoa as a function in your browser. But basically, if I click OK, we're going to see what that information looks like as a base64 string. So this base64 string is just like the rest. It has a header area. It has the body, the image data. And it's just in a different format. And as you can see, it's it's actually looks a, a lot more readable. There's no weird characters that aren't parsable here. It's all alphanumeric characters and operators like the plus symbol right there. So this is going to be what JavaScript actually uses to create a data URL to store inside of our image object that we created up on the top, that empty image object. But before we store this data inside of our image's source attribute, 
we have to add this little header right here. So when I click OK again, this alert prompt is going to fire and we're going to see what that looks like. So basically it just took this data colon image slash PNG semicolon base64 comma and it adds it in front of our base64 string and that's it. And then all we do is we set this equal to the image's source and it directly sets the source of the image equal to the image data in the format that it needs and we can use it right after that. So if I were to come in here and I were to comment all of these out quickly, if I can, now nah, just as slow as before, and comment this in and refresh my screen, now we can see that we have access to the images width directly after we set the source because we're no longer triggering a load. We're, we're actually directly setting the data inside of that image so there is no load necessary. And right after we set the image's source, we have access to the image that we loaded and we can do anything we want. So it's not really that exciting because we still do have to load the file. So you're probably like, well, what's the difference? I can either, both times I have to wait until the image loads before I can access it, but I just thought it was cool that you can directly set the image's source to a data URL. And if you wanted to, you could even store the information right here, you can actually store this in a file and set the image's source directly to this. You don't even need an image file because this is all the information that you'd get from an image file. So I could save this text file to my project and I could just skip all this. But that's a lot of extra work and then you can't easily go back and edit your images. So uh, I don't recommend that unless you have a really final finished product and I haven't tested it myself so I'm not sure if that will really work but in theory in my head I can't see any reason why it wouldn't work but I just think it'd be cool to save files like this instead of images and that would reduce your file size. And you could just pop it right into your images source and skip all of this conversion here and you have your images ready to go. So thought that was pretty cool. In addition to being able to have that cool stuff happen if you decide to go and investigate loading your images right from the base64 string like that, you also can have access to the progress event when you're using XML HTTP request. So say you're loading a really, really big image and you want to make a loading bar for it, you can do that with XML HTTP requests uh, progress event. So the progress event basically says uh, it listens for the server to send packets of data from that file back to the browser. So basically when I make this request and I, I ask to load the human.png file and I send that request off to the server, the server is going to say, okay, I'm going to get the file, it gets the file. And it's like, this is a really big file. I'm going to send it back to you in chunks. And it sends chunks. And every time you get a chunk, the progress event fires. And it says, you have received chunk 10 of 1,000. But really, it's the chunks are bytes. So it's like you have received 572 bytes out of a million bytes. So you can make really nice uh, real-time loading bars with the XML HTTP request method of loading images if your images are in fact that large. So that's another added bonus in addition to just feeling cool because you loaded an image with XML HTTP request instead of just setting source, which to me feels kind of, I don't know, it doesn't feel as satisfying as loading it this way. Although I do feel like, uh, I think that loading it with by setting the source like you do here is actually faster than this. So, you know, choose wisely for for any application, I recommend this right here. This is solid, this is gonna work, and you're not gonna have problems with it. You can add error handling events too, as well, if you wanna handle error cases, keep that in mind. Um, I recommend this if you really want that progress event. So if you want progress and nice active loading bars, maybe go for this, otherwise I'd go for this up here. Simple, easy, it works great. I definitely do not recommend method one. 
So anyway, that has been my tutorial on how to load images in three different ways. And that XML HTTP request way was an added bonus because that's hard to figure out if you just are searching the internet. So hope you guys learned something. Hope you liked the video. If you did like the video on YouTube, subscribe to the channel because I'm going to have a lot more cool content coming out real soon. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. All right, guys, so I came back to it because I thought to myself, it's so easy to just do this and show you guys while I have this example open that I might as well just do it, even though I wasn't thinking I'd do this in the original video. But basically, like I was saying, it's super easy to just set an image's source equal to a base64 string. So I just commented out my, my load functions that load the other images and I substituted in this new image that I'm creating with an image with the source value of the base64 string for the human image. So look how simple this is. I don't have to load anything. All I do is keep the, the base64 string of the image in a string, and I just set it directly equal to the source, and I have instant access to this image immediately after I set the source of my image. So there's no loading involved here because I'm literally copying and pasting the data from my image, the usable data from my image directly into my program. So this eliminates all need to load. Now I don't recommend doing this with every single image because obviously it would make it hard to edit your images and obviously you're gonna be using more than just 16 by 16 pixel image dimensions. But if you have a couple small images that you just wanna throw right into your code, there's no reason you can't do this and it would boost performance. But keep in mind that with larger images, this string is going to be ridiculously large. Already it's taking up two lines in my code and this is just for a 16 by 16 image. So don't do this all the time, but it's definitely cool that you can do this. And if you have like a tiny icon or something that you just wanna pop up on the screen without ever loading it, this'll work. I'd say the cache is probably a better idea though. but let me uh, comment this back out and get things back to normal to show you what the code actually does. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to comment out the code I just wrote and I'm going to comment back in the old code, save, refresh the screen, and those methods I just showed you, those three methods are going to draw the flower, the gel, and the human to the screen. And now when I come in here and I comment all this out, and put my new code back in, just the human's data will be drawn to the screen because that's all I want to happen. But I just think it's so cool that you can set the source directly equal to a base64 string. You could totally eliminate the need for loading objects. I mean, you could go in and replace all of your objects with your object files with the base64 strings you need and improve efficiency and just load in the base64 strings. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. And that's it. I'll see you next time.